In machine learning, we encounter many types of matrices. White matrices in neural networks, covariance matrices in statistics, transformation matrices in data processing. But some matrices are extra special, and those are the ones we are going to focus on today. One particularly important class is called orthogonal matrices, and they appear everywhere from neural network initialization to dimensionality reduction algorithms. So what exactly is an orthogonal matrix? Well, a matrix Q is orthogonal if Q transpose Q equals the identity matrix. That's the definition, and it might seem simple at first, but let's unpack what this really means. If Q transpose Q equals I, then that tells us something beautiful. Q transpose is equal to Q inverse, so the transpose is the inverse. This is remarkable, because computing a transpose is trivial now. You just flip the coin along its diagonal. Whereas computing a matrix inverse is typically much more expensive and numerically tricky. Now, let's think about what this means in terms of columns of Q. If you write Q with its columns as Q1, Q2, up to Qn, then the condition Q transpose Q equals i is really telling us something about these column vectors. Specifically, the columns must be orthogonal vectors. To visualize this, let's consider two unit vectors that are perpendicular to each other. Say Q1 pointing to the right and Q2 pointing up. These satisfy our conditions. Each has length 1, so the norm of Q1 equals the norm of Q2, which equals 1. And they are perpendicular, so their dot product Q1 dot Q2 equals 0. Now, here is something beautiful. If we rotate both of these vectors by the same angle, they remain orthonormal. The rotation preserves their unit length and their perpendicularity, and the matrix that performs this rotation with entries cosine theta and minus sine theta in the first row and sine theta and cosine theta in the second row, that's an orthogonal matrix. And we can verify that. Q transpose Q does indeed equal the identity. Thus, any rotation matrix is orthogonal. And in fact, rotations are the most intuitive examples of orthogonal transformations. So what makes orthogonal matrices so special from a geometric perspective? Well, it turns out they preserve fundamental geometric structure. Let me show you two key properties. First, orthogonal matrices preserve lengths. So if you take any vector V and multiply it by an orthogonal matrix Q, the length of QV equals the length of V, and we can prove this. The square length of QV is QV transpose times QV, which equals V transpose Q transpose QV. And since Q transpose Q is the identity, this becomes V transpose V, which is just the square length of V. So lengths are preserved exactly. Second, orthogonal matrices preserve angles between vectors. If we have two vectors V and W, then the dot product of QV and QW equals the dot product of V and W. The proof is similar. We have QV transpose times QW, which equals V transpose Q transpose QW. Again, Q transpose Q is the identity. So we get V transpose W, the original dot product. And since the dot product determines the angle between vectors, this means angles are preserved too. And here is the key insight. If a transformation preserves both lengths and angles, then it's what we call a rigid motion. And the orthogonal transformations are rotations and reflections. They can spin things around and flip them over, but they can stretch, squeeze, or distort. This geometric interpretation will help us understand why machine learning loves these matrices. So, let's talk about why orthogonal matrices appear everywhere in machine learning. First, numerical stability. When you are implementing algorithms that require matrix inversion, and there are many such algorithms in machine learning, orthogonal matrices are your friend. Why? 
because computing Q inverse is trivial. You just take the transpose. There are no numerical errors from complicated inversion procedures, so no worries about ill-conditioned matrices. Second, neural network initialization. When you initialize the weights of a deep neural network, you need to be careful. If the weights are too large, gradients can explode as they propagate backward. If they are too small, gradients can vanish and your network won't learn effectively. But if you initialize weight matrices to be orthogonal, you get a beautiful property. The norm of Q times the gradient equals the norm of the gradient. So gradients maintain their scale as they flow through the network. This prevents both explosion and vanishing, which is why orthogonal initialization is a popular technique for training deep networks. Third, let's talk about QR decomposition. Any matrix A can be decomposed as A equals QR, where Q is orthogonal and R is upper triangular. This factorization is incredibly useful. It's used in solving linear systems, computing least square solutions, and in many eigenvalue algorithms. And the stability properties of Q makes this computation robust. Fourth, and perhaps the most prominently, we have principal component analysis, which relies on the singular value decomposition. The SVD writes any matrix A as U sigma V transpose, where U and V are orthogonal matrices and sigma is diagonal. The columns of these matrices give us orthogonal directions, the principal components that capture the directions of maximum variance in our data. And PCA is all about finding an orthogonal coordinate system that best represents the structure in high dimensional data. And it's one of the most widely used dimensionality reduction techniques in machine learning. Now, having said all that, let's take a step back and see the big picture. Orthogonal matrices are fundamental to machine learning because they preserve the geometric structure, maintaining both lengths and angles. They provide numerical stability because they are trivially easy to invert, you just transpose them. They enable stable gradient flow in deep networks, preventing the gradients from exploding or vanishing as they propagate through many layers. And they form the mathematical basis of dimensionality reduction techniques like PCA and SVD, giving us orthogonal directions that capture the essential structure in our data. And that basically wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this explanation helpful, give it a thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to stay up to date with everything I post on this channel. See you in the next one. Bye bye.